It's no secret that prehistoric Earth was home to some of the largest animals to ever walk the planet. But what if I told you that despite the size of these monstrous animals, tiny creatures of today like ants, penguins, and even the ever-disgusting cockroach not only managed to survive during that era, but theoretically might have even scared the massive dinosaurs. From beetles the size of cars to penguins taller than NBA players, here are some of the tiny animals today that had massive ancestors. If you took a trip back to the prehistoric days, one of the first things you'd notice, besides the cool temperatures and excessive plant life, is the sheer size of the wildlife. This is largely due to the cooler temperature and excessive plant life. But how do a cool breeze and excessive plants give rise to animals the size of a truck? Well, the simple answer is Cope's Rule. Named after the American paleontologist Edward Drinker Cope, who proposed the idea in the late 19th century, the rule states that when there is more food available, animals tend to get bigger over time. But just how big did the animals get? Well, let's dive into our first giant tiny creature. Known for their cute waddle, amazing animated shows, and having a suit named after them, the average penguin measures just around 2 to 4 feet, or 60 to 100 centimeters tall, and weighs between 10 and 88 pounds, or 5 and 40 kilograms, depending on the species. Now, this is quite small, about the size of your average vacuum cleaner and the weight of a large watermelon or maybe even a full laundry basket. The penguin's ancestor, on the other hand, was anything but small, with an estimated height of about 2 meters meters or six and a half feet, the Paleodiptes Klikowski was almost twice the size of the largest modern penguin, the Emperor Penguin. Standing at the same height as NBA star James Harden and even three feet taller than Steph Curry, the Paleodiptes Klikowski was a species of giant penguin that lived during the Eocene Epoch approximately 34 to 37 million years ago. Feeding mainly on fish, squid, and other marine organisms, this massive penguin's fossils were found on Seymour Island off the coast of the Antarctic Peninsula. Besides their massive figure, the Paleodiptes were much like their modern descendants today. Although their environment would have been much warmer today, with temperate climates supporting lush forests and diverse marine life, the Paleodiptes still hunted the same way the modern penguins do, by diving to significant depths to catch their prey, using their wings as flippers to propel themselves through the water with agility and speed. Like modern penguins, they had a streamlined body with robust muscular wings adapted into strong flippers for efficient swimming. Covered in dense feathers, they also likely sported a dark-colored black and white underside and they also possessed a strong pointed beak suited for their diet of fish and marine prey. Keeping up with the similarities, these giants also lived in colonies on land nesting and raising chicks, much like modern penguins do. Moving on from penguins, another set of animals that had massive ancestors were, to the horrors of many, insects. The Carboniferous period, also known as the Coal Age, which lasted from approximately 359 to 299 million years ago, was an extremely weird period of time. It was home to dense forests, primarily made up of ferns and early seed plants. It was also home to some of the largest insects to ever walk the Earth. Taking center stage in the horror show that was the Carboniferous period was the Meganeura, a giant dragonfly insect with wingspans up to 70 to 75 centimeters. Found in regions that were part of the large coal forests of what is now Europe and North America, the Meganeura lived during the late Carboniferous period approximately 300 million years ago. A carnivorous predator, it primarily fed on other smaller insects and possibly even small amphibians and vertebrates. With its strong mandibles and agile flight, the Meganeura was an effective hunter who likely used its excellent vision and swift flight to capture prey midair. Another horrific giant insect of the Carboniferous period was Arthropleura. Living about 345 to 290 million years ago, the Arthropleura was a genus of giant millipede-like arthropods that could grow up to 8 feet in length, making it the largest known land invertebrate of all time. The length of a Mini Cooper, the Arthropleura was likely a detritivore feeding on decaying plant matter, including leaves, wood, and other organic debris. However, some studies suggest it might have also consumed small animals or other invertebrates. Thriving in the dense, swampy forests of the Carboniferous period, and likely moving in a slow, lumbering manner due to its large size and multiple legs, the Arthropleura lived in North America and Europe. Another scary giant insect was Pulmonoscorpius, the ancestor of the feared scorpion. This creative idea from hell was no joke. Living during the Devonian period, approximately 419 to 359 million years ago, the Pulmonus scorpius could grow up to 70 centimeters or 28 inches in length, making it one of the largest known scorpions ever. Discovered in Scotland, this nightmare fuel lived in moist, forested regions and was likely a ground-dwelling creature that moved with a slow, deliberate gait. If its size isn't scary enough, the Pulmonus scorpius also used its pincers and stingers to defend itself and capture prey. 
primarily fed on smaller arthropods and possibly small vertebrates and had a venomous sting for hunting and a hard exoskeleton for defense. If the Pulmonoscorpius was not scary enough, then fasten your seatbelt because everyone's worst enemy had a giant ancestor. Yes, we're talking about the cockroach. Named the Carboniferous Cockroach, it was an ancient relative of modern cockroaches that lived during the Carboniferous period approximately 359 to 299 million years ago. Living in humid, swampy forests, the Carboniferous Cockroaches lived in regions that were part of the ancient supercontinent Pangaea, including areas that are now North America and Europe. Causing nightmares and putting all horror movies to shame, these cockroaches could grow up to 9 centimeters in length and were probably quick and agile, able to scuttle through leaf litter and hide in crevices to avoid predators. They were most likely omnivores, feeding on a variety of organic matter, including decaying plant material, fungi, and possibly small insects. The worst part about these giant roaches is that just like in a horror movie, you couldn't step on them and crush them. This was all thanks to their hard exoskeleton, which protected them from predators. The Titanomyrma was also another giant insect from the past. Roaming around during the Eocene Epoch, these giant ants lived in various locations including Europe and North America approximately 44 to 49 million years ago. These giant ants inhabited forests and other terrestrial environments where they likely foraged for food and built nests similar to those of modern ants. However, unlike modern ants, these giant ancestors were simply giants, with queens reaching sizes up to 5 to 6 centimeters in length and workers likely around 3 to 4 centimeters long. For context, the queens were roughly the size of a small lemon, while the workers were the size of a standard AAA battery. Yikes! Feeding on insects and other small invertebrates, these carnivorous monstrosities were likely predatory, using their size and strength to overwhelm and subdue their prey. Like modern ants, they lived in colonies structured around a queen, workers, and soldiers. They also exhibited complex social behaviors, including cooperative hunting and nest building. They constructed theirs in soil or decaying wood, using pheromones and other chemical signals for communication and organization within the colony. To make matters a bit more unsettling, this nerve-wracking bug could also fly. But they weren't the only supersized things that flew in the past, as even birds had ancient giant monsters, and none were more fearsome than the Argentavis. Living during the late Miocene epoch around 6 to 8 million years ago, the Argentavis lived in the open grasslands and mountainous regions of what is now Argentina. A carnivorous bird, likely a scavenger similar to modern vultures, it fed primarily on carrion, using its keen eyesight to spot dead or dying animals from high in the sky. And for the sake of the animal it scouted, we hope they were dead, as this bird was an absolute unit. It had a wingspan of approximately 23 feet, making one of the largest flying birds ever known. If you can't imagine it, then just know it was roughly equivalent to the length of a London double-decker bus. Standing at 6.5 feet tall, weighing around 70 to 72 kilograms, and being about 11.5 feet from beak to tail, the Argentavis is one of the biggest birds ever known to man. And scarily enough, it could fly. Putting to shame birds like the ostrich and elephant bird, the Argentavis was an exceptional glider, using thermal air currents to stay aloft for hours with minimal effort. Like most birds, it likely nested in high, inaccessible places such as cliffs or large trees to protect its eggs and young from predators. While it's not certain, Argentavis might have exhibited social behaviors similar to those of modern vultures, potentially forming loose colonies around abundant food sources. Moving on from the skies to the ocean, marine animals also had absolute titans as their ancestors, and a good example was none other than the Megalodon. Swimming in the world's oceans during the Cenozoic era, specifically from approximately 23 to 3.6 million years ago, roughly the length of a standard school bus, the megalodon could grow up to 59 feet long with teeth up to 7 inches long. As an apex predator, it had a diet consisting mainly of large marine mammals such as whales, dolphins, and seals. It also preyed on large fish and other sharks thanks to its powerful jaws filled with large serrated teeth which allowed it to bite through tough skin and bones making it a formidable hunter. The warm shallow seas were abundant during the Miocene and Pliocene epochs with fossil evidence suggesting they were widespread with remains found in regions ranging from North and South America to Europe, Africa, and Australia. To achieve this global status, the Megalodon acted just like sharks today, as it might have migrated across oceans, following its prey and breeding in specific areas. To hunt, it likely used ambush tactics to surprise its prey, delivering powerful bites that incapacitated large marine mammals quickly. It may have targeted the rib cages and flippers of whales to immobilize them, if that's not scary, then how about a giant piranha? 
These monsters also lived during the Miocene Epoch, approximately 8 to 10 million years ago. The Mega Piranha inhabited the freshwater systems of South America, likely in rivers and lakes similar to those where modern piranhas are found today. They were extremely carnivorous fish and likely an omnivorous predator, feeding on a variety of prey including smaller fish, crustaceans, and possibly small vertebrates. To add to its fear appeal, its teeth were a combination of sharp, pointed teeth typical of predatory fish and the more flattened teeth of modern piranhas, suggesting a versatile diet. The mega piranha probably hunted in schools, using their sharp teeth to tear flesh from prey quickly. This schooling behavior would have made them highly effective predators, capable of taking down larger prey through collective effort. But that's not all, as with its combination of sharp and flat teeth, mega piranha could crush hard-shelled prey and tear through flesh, allowing it to exploit a wide range of food sources or ways to kill. So how big were they? Well, they were about the size of an average skateboard, growing to about 3.3 feet in length. Crabs, too, weren't excluded from the growth project, as their ancestors were also giant animals, the size of a large family car, like a mid-sized SUV. The giant crabs existed during various periods in Earth's history, with notable examples from the Devonian to the Cenozoic eras. They lived in marine environments ranging from shallow coastal waters to deeper oceanic regions, depending on the species and the era. They were primarily scavengers, feeding on dead or decaying organic matter, along with small fish, mollusks, and other marine creatures. Capable of swift movements using their powerful legs, these creatures had robust claws and armored exoskeletons, which helped them crush shells and tear apart tougher prey. To the dismay of everyone with ophidiophobia, snakes also had much bigger ancestors, specifically the titanoboa. The length of a city bus, the titanoboa stretched about 40 to 60 feet, Weighing around 1,135 kilograms, the titanoboa is the largest snake ever. It was a carnivorous snake, feeding primarily on large vertebrates such as fish, turtles, and crocodilians. Its large size allowed it to consume prey much larger than modern snakes, using constriction to subdue and kill its victims. As an ectothermic reptile, titanoboa would have relied on external sources of heat to regulate its body temperature, likely basking in the sun to warm up and retreating to cooler areas to cool down. Imagine seeing a 40-foot snake get a tan. For hunting, the titanoboa likely ambushed its prey near water sources, using its powerful muscles and a large body to quickly coil around and suffocate its victims. So maybe watching one get a tan isn't the best idea. It's still unclear why modern animals evolved to become smaller over time, but it would be very accurate to say that it was for the best, as any of these creatures would have made life a whole lot harder. But what do you think? Would their presence today have caused a problem? Which one scared you the most? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you liked the video, please give it a like and subscribe. Until next time, stay safe.